Hello and welcome to another Beard Clipper video. In this video I take you through my first ever attempt, and it really was my first ever attempt at playing air flicks. So I walk through the first round, just uh, going through all the steps, and then give an analysis at the end about what I found about the game. So if you are interested, I hope that you find this interesting. It's a little bit of a different video for me than the usual. Uh, I am going to try to do some more of these types of uh, gameplay videos, uh, but I do need to improve my setup a little bit. It wasn't all that ideal for me, uh, but it was a lot of fun and I can't wait to give it another go. Um, now that I've played it once, um, I reckon that I'll be able to set it up pretty quickly and, uh, and it looks like a really, really fun game to play, particularly with, um, you know, if you just want to throw something down and have a bit of a giggle. So, yeah, enjoy the, enjoy the video, and I'll see you again at the end. All right, so let's have a look at Airflix in detail. I've spent a little bit of time going through the planes that come in the core box. Uh, I've had a couple of issues which I've contacted um, <coughs> Rob about. Um, that disc is badly etched, as you can see, which is not usable really. Uh, and while quite a lot of the sculpts have issues, this one that's just that's just completely and utterly not acceptable twist. So I've asked him to replace that. Um, and I also had one that has a missing tail, so uh, a little bit of a broken tail. Oh, well, actually, that's badly done as well. Maybe I'm not sure. Yeah, I might have a couple there that are, are badly what's it did. Um, and that means that I don't seem to have the correct number of bases for all of my models as well. Uh, so, so yeah, so I'll, um, I'm, I'm gonna hopefully get a hear back from Robert about that. Um, but most of it looks really, really good. Uh, I'm not sitting here complaining, I'm just saying that there are some issues. So what I'm gonna do now uh, is get myself ready to play my first game. And I'm just gonna do it solo, just gonna flick uh, planes around and have a bit of a giggle and just see how it goes and see how it works. So all of these are the extra planes that I bought. Um, and um, what we have in here are all of the dials um, that are going to be used for the um, playing board. So what I'm now going to do is get these set up and see how easy that is. And I thought I'd just run the camera for a bit to, uh, to, t to show you how easy it is to, or to talk through what it is I see. So there's lots and lots of little bits here you can see. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and what I think you do, I think you take this dial and you take one of these little nubs and I think you push it in there. And I think you then take one of the backs and you join it up. There we are. So that then means that you can rotate your dial, but it does also mean that it tips a little bit forwards. Hmm. Okay. So there's a fair bit of that to be done, so I won't run the camera for the whole of it. Um, so I'll get two of these boards made up. Um, you can see you've got alley, allies and you've got axis. You've got different artwork. So I'll make one axis and one allies up. And then what we'll do is we'll set a board up and uh, we'll set the mat out and we'll have a go. Right, so that's all done. Took a bit longer than I expected. Uh, and I've, as you can see, set out a uh, board. Now my f camera positioning is not ideal, unfortunately. It might have been better for me to do this over on the bigger table, but uh, I'm all set up now and I don't want to have to change it. So what I've done is um, <clears throat> I've picked out that we're gonna do the blitz mode, which is probably well, the, the simplest mode is supremacy mode, but I wanted to make use of the bombers, um, which are set up over here, um, and have it so that the Axis was trying to bomb um, a airfield that's right on the coast, and the uh, Allies are trying to shoot them down. Uh, just because that's the one that interested me the most when I was uh, actually looking at this and bought it a long time ago. I do just want to say that I'd realized that I don't have misshapen or misprinted uh, tokens, which I'd actually need to email Robert and tell him. Uh, they were for the Paul Bolton Defiant, I didn't realise. Um, and I will go in on another video into detail. This is my learning game. I'll go into detail in another video and show more details of how you set this up and what you see and what have you. I do have 
quite badly uh, miscast planes in places um, and I'm gonna need to paint them and I need to talk to Rob about that see if he's got any replacements he can send um, but yeah everything's worked out pretty well so what we've got is at this end of the table I have my allies so I have picked up a 70 point game which is a large game I may not finish it all today I may not finish it all in this in this video but at least I'm going to show some of the flicking and some of the techniques and have a little bit of fun so we have three Supermarine Spitfires obviously we have two Paul Bolton defiance obviously and we have one p40 warhawk so that's what we have there um, and then on the German side coming in to attempt to bomb those nefarious Germans we have a defensive screen of a, of a ME a BF 109 and a, a Focke Wolf 190 and then the bombers I have picked a Dornier do, do 17, a Junkers JU88, and a Heinkel HE111. Just because, why not? Now, there's six planes on the on the British side, and there's five planes on the Axis side. Uh, and that's three bombers and two fighters. The bombers are tougher. They've got a defence of eight, whereas the fighters all have a defence of six, or whatever, uh, health points of six. So the way that this works is, is that you start off in one of the... The, the, the first full hexes on the on the board. So in this case, the um, axis will start somewhere along this line, this being the first full set of hexes on that side, and the allies will start off somewhere in this side, this being the first full set of hexes. And I believe what you do is, if we were playing this and it wasn't a solo game that I'm playing, is that you flick a dice um, and this is one really cool thing. There's this lovely metal dice, which is a bit dirty, might need a bit of a clean, and I might paint it up. But a lovely metal kind of like uh, coin, which you flick to see who's going to place first. So let's do that. So the allies get to place first. Um, I believe what actually will happen is, is if you roll that dice, then the person that wins it can pick which side they want to play if you're not doing this bombing mission, if you're doing like a, a, a bundle, <laughs> um, then uh, and there's not specific uh, uh, positions to start, then that would also allow you to kind of pick a side and then the other person starts to deploy first. But what we'll say is we'll say that the Allies are the first, have the first advantage. And what you do is you place one of your planes fully inside one of these hexes. So there we are. We have a P-40 Warhawk that is on the board. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm now gonna place one of my bombers. And the, the aim of this game, this, this here, is to bomb these parts, okay? Um, and so um, if I can get over to this one, it's not protected. Well, it has flak around it here, um, but it's, the flak is relatively distant. Um, if you go over a flak point, then you take wounds. Um, so, so yeah, you need, to, you need to be aware of those flak points. So I'm going to place my um, DO-17 here. Yeah, right. So let's place another plane. Um, and what I'll do is I will get these all put out and then I'll come back when I've set everything up uh, and we'll start with the first turn. Right then, the pieces are set and they're moving. So what I've done is we have the uh, bombers are coming in here in the centre and they're flanked by their uh, fighter escort. And I've placed the rest of my allies over here in a straight line just waiting to go so turn one the aim is as i say to for the allies to shoot down these planes <laughs> so let's just say the aim victory if the axis planes manage to bomb four out of the five bombing locations then the axis forces win if the allies manage to destroy all axis bombers before they can bomb the sites the allies win there we are. And there is a barrage mode, which I'm not doing this time, but I can place, you can add this in, you can place barrage balloons, and if you fly into a barrage balloon, so I could put a barrage balloon here and here, for example, and that would make it much, much more difficult for the Axis to get into bomb my 
my airfield, which is what happened in real life, which is quite cool. But we're not going to put those in yet, but that's a nice little wrinkle to add. So the first player is going to flick. And um, as I placed first, I think that now that the axis is going to go first and you can turn and you can flick. So the turn involves using the ranging sticks. Now we've got two ranging sticks, one each, which is good. And you can go on to the, they've got these little dotted lines. And just an example, what I could do is I could turn that like that, I believe only to the center. I don't think you can turn it past the center until the center line, yes. So I, so based on the position of that flying straight forwards, this can only rotate a very small amount. And this is basically a quite realistic way of controlling the amount of um, maneuverability that, a, uh, that these older planes had. They, don't, they didn't like fly around the sky. Um, now the, uh, at the f fighters are a slightly more, I believe slightly more, um, more, more, um, able to maneuver but they're still tough so anyway we're going to go for number nine number nine is the do 17 so you can flick you can touch anywhere in in, in between the dotted lines on the back because they can only fly forwards and then you give it a flick ha ha there we are so that's flicked in and as you can see he's going to have a trouble getting to this bomb because he's not going to be able to turn around and i'm not going to, be able to flick him over there so that's a bit of an issue for me there now what we need to look at here is range and also the fact that the camera's in the way <laughs> but never mind so if i can get one of my bomb one of my planes to within uh, to, to over here, then I'm going to have to start to shoot this guy down. Uh, but what I, the problem I've got is, is that he's got guns as well. Um, and I believe that Mr. Nine can shoot forwards and back. Yes, he can. He can shoot in this and he can also shoot behind. So what I really need to do for this is to attack him from the side because then he won't be able to fire back at me. But obviously I do have the rest of these aeroplanes over here to contend with. Um, which could cause me a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick uh, one of my Spitfires to come in. Um, and I'm also aware that they could come past me. So I need to be aware of that. So I'm going to try and flick this to turn. That's my aim. Let's see whether I can get a spin on this. We're bearing in mind as well that I've got a Flocker Wolf um, 190 over there. So... Ah, that didn't go very well, did it? <laughs> I was too nervous of the flick. Right, so I'm now going to bring my next bomber in. And this one is going to be the Heinkel HE111. Let's see how well of a flick I can get on this one. Oh, look at that. That went flying, but not in the best way. Because now just a little flick is going to mean that a couple of my planes are going to be able to get around and shoot that one down. That went a little far. And also, I'll have to check to see whether I take some damage from the fact that he's over a flak. But that's fine. So, oh, I need to make notes of what I've moved that's another thing that you do so it's a really I mean it's a really nice technique that you have on this in that um, you've got these little boards and you move them down to say this is ready to go this has moved this has had a big problem so you need to take take, take wounds or whatever um, and, and it's a really easy way of keeping track of who's moved so what we're going to do is we're going to bring the Warhawk in and I'm going to try to attack this guy. So I am going to actually rotate this now. So I'll put it on the center line and rotate him. There we are. So you can rotate. He's much more maneuverable because his, um, he's got more space that you can rotate him. Then now I'm going to flick him to try to get across this cloud bank because at the moment because there's clouds there I won't be able to shoot him. Ha! So I'm not going to be able to shoot him as well because I've still got a line that goes across but I can get into him. However, 
He's there, so I need to move him. <laughs> However, now Mr. One is going to come zooming in to try to defend his mate. Oh, crash! That was terrible! Right, I need to remember what happens with that. I will now do a little bit of research and find out. I will be right back. Okay, so that particularly klutzy example of flying means that pilot number one goes down and shows a major penalty, which is the other one, the little uh, kind of uh, exclamation mark, hand up. Okay. Um, and we'll subtract two, two points. So he has six, so he's just taken two points of damage because of that. So let's rotate the dial. There we are. So he's on four now. If a collision causes another plane or planes to be knocked off the map, which it didn't, the offending plane suffers a catastrophic penalty and is immediately moved from place. Well, it didn't. It didn't knock it off the map. Uh, players knocked off the map belonging to the offending player added to the reinforcement queue, see leaving the map below. Okay, so... Yeah, so basically, if he had knocked this off, then I could have placed it straight back on the map. If I'd knocked my own plane off, then it would go into the reinforcement queue. But he takes a, um, a major... A major penalty and um, yeah cannot shoot this turn and suffers two damage there we are so let's uh, let's carry on <laughs> that was a bit rubbish wasn't it so now it's uh, my at the allies turn um, and I'll, after this go I'll probably uh, come back and report per turn on this rather than talk you through it but I think it's been interesting to see particularly because I've actually done that stupidity so eight moved so now I've got these so funnily enough what I, so there are other things you need to do you need to completely leave the hex you're in so I can't just nudge this to here because then that'll be a little bit of damage. Basically, you're flying too slow. So what I need to do is with number six, who I'm going to move next. Um, and this is difficult because of where the camera is as well. And that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. I want to try and get behind this. Now, I can't turn him because he's flown already. He's been knocked. But I need to get here. Oh, and I flew into him as well. <gasps> So that's a catastrophic, and the idiot, this is the Paul Bolton. He can only shoot backwards. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning this game, as you can tell. So that was a bit stupid. He can't shoot anyone. Well, actually, he can shoot this guy in short range. Just can't shoot him. Anyway, there we are, and he flew into the guy. So you can see it's quite quick once you get used to the rules and once you get used to how things work, it's quite quick. We've got one more 190 and we've got the JU-88. So I think the, the JU-88 is just going to come in and see what he can do up this centre bit. So he's actually going to rotate a bit. Um, it doesn't rotate much, he hasn't got much movement. Let's see, he's actually crooked on his base. Well, he went far enough, so that's fine, but he didn't do very much, and he's twisted out of position, he's going sideways. So we now have another couple of these planes, so let's go for the Spitfire, number three. Okay. It'll be easier when the camera's not in the way. And then we've got the last Fokker Wolf over here to go. Let's see where he's going to go. Came off his thing. Came off his base. That's no good. I'll be painting and gluing these down. And so now we're going to do the final um, one here, which is number two. Number one. I must have flicked number two by mistake. Number one. And uh, number seven. Don't forget, number seven is a pull bolt and defiant. So we want to go quite a long way with him. So we want to rotate him a little bit. There we are. Good. Right, so that's the end of the move phase. So next, we'll bring the shooting phase. Right, so 
What we do now is we work out who's in range of whom and then we roll some dice. So I've got my dice tray here, which I'll put where we can see what the results are. And what it suggests you do, because even if a model is reduced to zero health points, it can still shoot because it's simultaneous. So you don't remove things as you go. Um, so it's a good idea to keep uh, everything on the board and just kind of like measure out and see who might be in range. Now that one, very luckily, that Spitfire is not in range. However, that means that nothing is in range over here, which is a bit rubbish, but we are going to have some shooting over there. So you, it comes with, uh, we, we come with quite a few dice, which I'll gather together now, um, and you get different dice based on range and based on um, position on, in the arc that you are, which is pretty cool as well. So um, let's have a look over here. So first of all, I have a Paul Bolton over here that is in short range of the uh, HE111. Now, the HE111 um, is within is in short range, and also it is from behind. So a shooting bonus, a plane attacking at short range and into the rear at the same time will achieve maximum bonus adding both yellow and red bonus dice. So if we look at number seven, he gets two white dice as attack by, by standard. He is also in short range, so he gets a yellow, and he is also shooting from behind, so he gets a red. Having said that, don't forget that he's also in range and will be being hit from behind by return fire. But first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to roll and see how many strikes we get for my Paul Bolton. Cool. Four strikes. So number 12 takes four damage. So let's knock that down. He goes from eight down to four. However, he can also shoot. And he, shooting from the back, only gets one, one white. However, once again, short range and shooting behind. So he is going to roll three dice against the Paul Bolton. Now bear in mind the Paul Bolton is not as hard as he. Keep it in the dice. Ah, oh, so that's two damage on the Paul Bolton. And that was number seven. So number seven takes two. So he goes from six also down to four. So that's these two have shot, okay. Um, so what we now have is we now have this Paul Bolton, which is not in, uh, it can, cannot shoot the, um, this um, 109, however can shoot and is in short range, but I'm not going to say is going to be firing from behind. So that's going to be two whites and a yellow for being in short range against number 12 as well. So one more damage on number 12. So there we are. So that is a bit badly damaged, down to three. Um, so I think that's all of the shooting I can do. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, no one else is in range. No one else is within shooting arcs. The only other thing to look at is the flak. So, um, Let's just have a quick look at that. If at the end of a plane's movement, its base is overlapping any flak markers on the map, it will suffer one damage point for each one overlapped. Okay. So, um, so what we have here is, that is not overlapping. However, Number 12 is, so number 12 is down to two damage already. That is pretty bad, but no one else is. Right, so there we are, that was the first turn. Going for it quite slowly, obviously, because I'm just picking it up. What I'm gonna do now is play out the rest of this game and let you know how it goes. And I'm quite looking forward to it, but it'll be nice to move the camera and be able to get into position a little bit easier uh, and uh, see whether the allies can beat the Axis back. Right then, game over. Uh, I've called it because I've been left with one German plane on the board, which is the DO-17, the Dornier, is over here. Um, and I've still got 
five allied fighters. So it will just end up being, I'm getting tired. I've got other things I need to get on with this evening. It's a good game, um, easy, but hard, very, very hard. Uh, controlling the flicks is very difficult. I did manage to get two bombs off, but like I say, I had uh, one allied plane destroyed and four Axis planes destroyed. Um, and that wasn't because of any kind of bias, I was just flicking and not doing very well, um, causing damage to myself but not going far enough. I did have one plane go shooting off across the room, <laughs> which isn't very ideal, it was a bit scary, didn't damage anything for, thankfully, so that was good. Um, but yeah, that then came on and actually did quite well. That was a Dornier that went off the, uh, off the side of the map and he's over there heading as best as he could but he's off as you can see he's uh keeping keeping the flick straight is tough and i would say that it does say that you can just press fit these planes but i would absolutely recommend that you glue them in place because it changes as they if they're wobbling around it's going to change your flick bottom line and uh, you're not going to have a stable flick so there we are first little kind of test now i'm a little bit more comfortable with the rules i think this game will definitely thrive with multiple players because you can have a giggle it's a laugh and i would recommend that you don't play on tiles <laughs> so i'm not going to play in here again because that was scary but yeah yeah the uh the allies defended their airfield so uh, that can't be a bad thing well there you are that was a really fun game to play and next i need to play it actually with angela um, against an opponent and i think it will really shine there it was a little bit difficult to uh, uh, kind of play solo but it was good to get the uh uh, get some of those rules under my belt so that I can teach you a bit better uh, and we can have a bit of a laugh. So we'll get a few games and then maybe we'll come back to the uh, channel with a little bit more gameplay. Uh, for now I'm painting up the planes and I will be doing some content on that. Um, and yeah, so there'll be a, little, a few other videos around Airflix before we do get back to uh, maybe playing some games. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below if you backed or if uh, it looks interesting to you. Or if you like these style of videos, let me know as well. Uh, if you think I should make more like this, uh, then please do let me know. Or if you hate it, let me know as well. Uh, I always appreciate all your comments. So thanks for watching and as always, please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.